Hello, I'm Howard Williams and I'm Professor of Archaeology in the Department of History and Archaeology at the University of Chester. And I wanted to introduce to you for this University Archaeology Day something about our courses, but also something about our fieldwork and our projects. Now, I'm an expert in early medieval archaeology, but I've come out here to North East Wales to see a little bit older archaeology dating back to the Roman period. I've come out into the landscapes to see a very special archaeological site and meet one of my colleagues, Dr Caroline Pudney. Now Caroline, what have you been finding in these new excavations with our students out here working with Wrexham Museum? Um, so as Howard said, we're in North East Wales, uh, just outside Wrexham, um, and we are excavating the site of the first identified Roman villa in North East Wales. Um, and that's why I can't be with you guys today as well for UA UK Day, because um, I'm kind of otherwise occupied. So yeah, so we've got um, a Roman winged corridor villa, Howard, um, which is quite a recognisable um, plan, a footprint of a, a nice Roman rural house. Uh, and we've come straight down onto the wall, virtually straight underneath the plough soil. Wow. Which is fantastic. Uh, some of the walls have been rubbed out. Um, some of them are still intact. Uh, we've got possible hypercoarse flu as well, so the underfloor heating. Um, and lots of nice features turning up in the, the rooms of the villa. So what well. kind of things have you been finding in terms of artefacts? Um, so Roman pottery, so in some nice Samian ware imported from Gaul. Uh, we've got black burnish ware, so made more locally, so down on the south coast of England. Um, we've got mortaria, so these big kind of iconic mixing bowls um, that would have been used oh, yeah. to prepare food and grind herbs and spices. Uh, we've had also had a Roman coin. Right. So we've had a beautiful late Roman coin of the House of Constantine. Um, so it dates from about 337 uh, to 341 AD. And we've got local volunteers. Uh, we've also got students out digging with us for them to get more experience digging. Um, and as, as you said, with the, with the local museum as well. But we've, had, we've got lots of Roman villas. Why, why, would we, why, would we, why do we need another one? We're not, we're not far from a legionary Roman fortress in Chester, Diva. So, so why is this special? Why is it important? So this is the first villa that's been identified in this part of uh, Britannia, so yeah. Roman Britain. Oh. The only other known villa, or the nearest known villa, is the other side of Chester, yeah, the Roman place. fortress, a place called Eton by Tarpoli. Otherwise, we've got a smattering of villas across the west coast of Wales, but otherwise, the other ones that we know about are down south, so the Vale of Glamorgan through into sort of Newport, Monmouthshire area. So, this is really important because it completely alters, or has the potential to alter our understanding of rural life in this part of the world um, during the Roman period. We thought that people were living in isolated farmsteads, still in roundhouses. We thought that people were continuing quite a lot of Iron Age ways of life. Um, but this potentially alters or challenges that interpretation. And it's not just the villa. Right. We've got a possible bathhouse. Ooh. We've got a field system, trackways, outbuildings. There's a whole kind of farming villa complex in this landscape. And you were only a week in. You did geophysical survey and now you're just a week into excavation. But, you know, this could be a project that runs and runs with the local community, with the museum. Yes, so the, the farmer who owns the field has been so accommodating, he's let us come and dig here for three weeks this year. Um, we are hoping to come back for two, if not three more seasons, wow. um, expand the trenches, investigate more of the features across this landscape. But also as part of a bigger project, we want to um, explore the wider landscape even more. So remote sensing, LIDAR, um, more geophysics, because this cannot be the only villa in no. this landscape. This is agriculturally fertile land. You're in 10 miles, I think, as the crow flies, more or less, to the Legionary Fortress at Chester. You're under the protection of the army. This is safe villa territory, and there should be more hidden gems like this. And the thing about the Romans is we think we know it all. We think you have a, a, a blueprint of all the, 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 the artefact types, the coinage, the pottery, and we're not so far from the Roman fortress, but this landscape is really under-investigated, I think, isn't it? It's, it's so much to offer. Massively under-investigated. Under not lots of modern building, um, so there's not lots of commercial archaeology that happens here, especially yeah. in these rural areas. Um, archaeologists have looked for Roman roads, they've looked for Roman sites in this area, but they're not showing up on aerial photographs. No. Um, so we need to start using different tools to actually identify these sites. Well, that's fantastic about the site. I mean, I suppose to give uh, the University Archaeology Day sort of crowd a bit a bit more about us. I mean, we are a small friendly archaeology department based in the historic city of Chester, which has Roman roots, as we've been discussing. But we explore 
throughout the history of the city, the region, and our courses take you across the globe exploring the story of the human past from the Paleolithic right up to the, um, our world today. So, um, you know, I hope that gives you a little bit of an introduction of some of our field work, something about our course and our projects, and our students are involved at every stage, both on, in, in the classroom and out in the field.